Hey there! Have you ever wondered how you can build your own C-sharp libraries? I mean maybe you have developed some very cool logic that you might want to use throughout all the applications that you develop. So if you want to know more about this topic, stay tuned because that's exactly what we'll discuss in this video. Welcome to Developer Ramp Up, a channel dedicated to anybody who wishes to become a software developer. In this video we'll talk about how to create own class libraries. And this might be very useful because you might want to develop some logic that you can use throughout all the applications that you develop at the current time or even in the future. So developing own class libraries is very very important. Even if you're at the beginning level with your C-sharp programming, you are already using a lot of class libraries. Maybe you don't know about them, but you're surely using them. For instance, if we check here on a simple .NET Core console application, we see that we have a lot of such class libraries already imported. These libraries are usually DLL files. And for example, we have here this MS Core lib, which is the core class library for the that for the .NET uh, ecosystem. So class libraries are very very common and you already use them. Now how to create your own class libraries and that's exactly what we'll check out right now. So what we have here already is a simple console application. Our plan is to take our sorting algorithm that we already developed and if you didn't watch the videos on bubble sort selection sort and insertion sort you might have the links below in the description and please check that videos out the whole idea is right now to create an own class library containing all these different simple sort sorting algorithms and that we import that library in form as NuGet package in our console application so that we can use the sorting algorithms for from the library that we create. So that is the final outcome towards which we aim right now. So let's create a new project that will basically host our library. That will be our library. Now if you go to add new project here, we have a choice to make. What exactly should we choose because we don't want to build a console application or a WPF application or ASP.NET Core. We also don't want to build a simple, let's say, portable class library on the .NET framework. We want a library that should be available on each project types. What does this mean? This means very easily that uh, if we want our library to be available both on .NET Core and on the .NET Framework, we need to target the .NET standard. Otherwise, if we target only .NET Core, this will mean that our library would be usable only in .NET Core projects, but we might want to use our sorting algorithms also in WPF applications. So that's why we'll target the .NET standard. Now for the name, let's name this simply sort. And this will be also the name of our namespace. And this is a very important detail right now. But let's just create the application. Okay, it already exists. Okay, let's call it sorts1. This surely doesn't exist. And we have right now a new a project with a new class inside it, the project or the namespace is sorts1 and we have a class1. Let's start by renaming this class because we don't want to be class1 but we want to be called sort. Very simple. And now we should receive also this pop-up uh, and if we click guess what it will do, it will change our name of the class from class1 to sort and this is exactly what we want. Now, as a next step, we want to add our logic here and I want to write, write down in this moment all these uh, algorithms. So I will copy them from the solution that we used when we performed a comparison between bubble sort, selection sort and insertion sort. And if you didn't watch that video again, please check it out. You might find the link in, in the description below. 
or even on the screen here somewhere so check it out now of course here we don't have uh, this you the system diagnostics namespace so we will import it and right now our stopwatch would work what this uh, does is basically each method performs a certain sort like bubble sort selection sort and insertion sort and what it does in the end it simply tells us how much time each sort needed and that's exactly what we will want to display also in our .NET Core console application. Good, but, but before we are good to go, there is one more step to make, one important step. We said that we want to use this class library to import it in form of a NuGet package. So that's also very simple to do, but we have to make some configurations on this sort one project. So if we go on properties here, there are two things that uh, I want to change. First of all, under package, you can uh, check this checkbox to generate a new get package, which is exactly what we want to do. Now we have the version. Let's uh, as an author take uh, my name, which is Dan, uh, dev ramp up as a company and I think we shouldn't write down here a lot of details. You will see that these are important because this is how your library will then uh, be identified when you try to import this NuGet package. And uh, it's important also to know that when you import NuGet packages you can do that from the internet from NuGet.org for instance but you can also use local NuGet packages. And in fact, that's exactly what we uh, will do. And in this case, what we also want to define is when we build the project, in which folder should it be built? And uh, I already have a folder that is called NuGet, where I want to have my local NuGet packages. So if you don't have that, go ahead and create the folder where you want this lo uh, local NuGet package to be found. And uh, then you can simply uh, use that directory path here. And right now we should normally be ready. And if we build this project right now, it should generate a NuGet package for us. So let's go in the folder. And if, in fact, we have this source one with the version and uh, a new PKG uh, file extension, which is a NuGet package. So that's cool for now. Let's then go back to our console application. And of course, the next step would be uh, to import this uh, NuGet package. So on NuGet package manager, we can already see that uh, I have this sort, which is uh, authored by Dan, so by me. And I am looking in this local NuGet packages folder. Now, one thing, if you didn't configure this so far, it's important that uh, under this coggled wheel, you could do this simply add a new location from where you can import NuGet packages. And once you have that new location added, if you click on that dropdown, you would be able to choose it from here. And in this case, you would also see this NuGet package. So let's go on and install it. We have to click OK here and this will install our NuGet package, which is fairly cool. Now let's implement some logic in our simple console application. And uh, if you already watched the videos on uh, sorting algorithms or uh, comparing the performance of sorting algorithms, you already know the drill. So we want to have a new random object and we will use it to generate random numbers, of course, new random. And now we have the new object. Then we need an array of integers. So int array, let's call it numbers and it would be equal. Okay. Something went wrong here. Let's. Okay. Now it should be okay. So int array, which is called numbers would be equal new int array and let's make it 5000 elements so that we really have some time that we need to measure so now we have this random object now we have the array what we need to do right now is populate the array and for that i would use a for statement or a for loop sorry for that and here the only change that we have uh, to 
make is numbers.length. So this should be okay. And for each iteration, we want that the number at position i equal rnd.next and let's give it also an interval from 1 to 5001 let's say okay and this should do it right now we have the array so we can go on and see exactly if we can use our class library so we can simply try out sort it i don't want sorts one but sort dot bubble sort and let's pass in numbers now we still have this red squiggly line here and uh, that's okay because we have imported this NuGet package but we haven't defined the namespace with a using statement so that's exactly what we'll do right now so using sorts one which is our namespace that contains this class sort so this is the namespace and it contains this class it's very important if you want to do something similar you have to make sure that the name of the namespace is different than the name of the classes that uh, you have in that specific namespace because otherwise a simple using statement here won't do it you would have to use the full name of that specific class which it would be in this case, for instance, sorts one dot sort. But we don't want to do that, so we just can uh, delete this right now. And we have this sorts and bubble sort. So right now seems that everything is working. So let's also use the insertion sort method. And we also pass in numbers as an argument and also sort dot selection sort and also we pass the array of numbers as argument and well we should be ready right now so one last thing console read line this will help us to make sure that the console window will stay open also after the output is printed to the console and we should be able to run our program right now and it should display normally the time taken by each sorting algorithm to do this sort on this array containing 5000 elements and these are the results if you watch the video uh, on performance comparison of this algorithm you would find it is it is not too surprising so yeah that that's that's kind of it it seems that it's working properly but there is one more thing that i want to cover in this video we have here a console application which runs on .NET Core. And if we go on properties, we can check that out. We see it's .NET Core 2.0. But I said it's very important to choose a .NET standard for our class library. And to show you why is let's add a new project to this solution. So it would be add new project. But in this case, let's target the old classic desktop and let's use a console application which runs on dotnet framework so not not on dotnet core and uh let's name it net framework console and click ok now we have another console application here and this time if we check this out this application let's go on properties we can see that it's uh, it runs on the dotnet framework 4.6.1 so this is the dotnet framework and in fact what i wanted to show you here is we can also go on manage nuget packages here and let's select our local nuget repository let's click here on browse and here we have this sort so let's install it okay everything should be fine right now so we can close this new get package uh, manager window and let's simply take what we have here and copy it over in the normal console application and this would be this one in the program.cs and that's it of course once again uh, here we don't have this sort so we have to using sorts one so this is okay and the last thing that here is we have some problems 
Ah, so we copied it. Okay, sorry. That was a really big mistake from my side because I copied the entire method instead of copying only the code that we need. So right now everything should be okay. And if we run now our simple console application that runs on the .NET framework, uh, it should display the same results or the results might be different because sorting each array takes a different uh, amount of time. But the outcome that we expect is the same. So we get exactly uh, the milliseconds it took for each sorting algorithm to perform its job. So we can see that it works both with .NET Core on the console application that targets .NET Core and it also works with .NET Standard, uh, with uh, the normal .NET framework. Now, if we didn't target .NET standard for our class library and target only .NET core instead. We wouldn't be able to import and use this class library in our .NET, uh, .NET framework project. So that's why it's important if you want to have class libraries that could be used throughout the entire .NET ecosystem, then you should target the .NET standard. And that's it for now. Now you should be able to build your own C Sharp class libraries that target the .NET standard and therefore you would be able to use those libraries in all your .NET projects that you might have in future. Don't be shy and hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed this video, it's right here on the screen. A thumbs up would also be highly appreciated. This way you can really help others discover this video easier. Last but not least, if you have something to say, just hit me with your comment. Thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I wish you the very best.